Hello and welcome to another C-Sharp coding homework exercise for Windows Forms. In this one we are going to create an application called Personnel Database. We are to use the Visual Studio to create a database named Personnel.mdf. The database should have a table called Employee with columns for Employee ID, Name, Position and Hourly Pay Rate. The Employee ID should be the primary key and we should insert at least five simple sample rows of data into the employee table and create an application that displays the employee table in data grid view control. Well, I have the form ready, which is a blank form. There's nothing there because we first need to create the database and connection to it before we put in some uh, controls. So I'm going to right click my project and click add and new item and I'm going to scroll down and we are going to use the service based database and I'll name it personnel so that will create our database the .mdf which is right here in our properties now in the solution explorer sorry so uh, now if I double click it, it will appear in my server explorer. You can see that it has tables, but no tables there at all. So I'm going to add a new table, right click and click add new table. And when it loads, we can now insert the ID, which is already there for the employee or and uh, name, position and hourly pay. So ID, we can leave as integer and we do not allow nulls because we need a value for it, Specific, especially because it's a key. Another column will be name. This one will be, I'll just make it a varchar. Uh, you can use n varchar. Um, typically, I use varchar simply because or var car, if you pronounce it right, I guess, simply because if you use like a dot, like let's say Pavel Jr. with a period, you know, you want a var car. And again, I don't want to allow now because I want the name to be entered. Next one, position. And just like before, we can use var, var car 50. No nulls. All these will need to be entered through the user input. So we do not allow nulls. And finally, we'll do hourly pay. And this one, well, this one is money. So let's change it to money and no nulls. And currently the table is called table. I'm going to down here where it says the TSQL and I'll change table to employee. When that's done, all I have to do now, go up here, click update, and it will run the script and create the database with the columns and call it employee table. It's preparing to update the script and I will update the database. And now if I go to my server explorer and click refresh, you can see the employee table is there. And now I'm going to add five names. So I'll right click the table employee and show table data. Currently there is no one entered. So the first one I'll do uh, actually ID one, let's say Pavel. And well, my position let's say would be a programmer because and my hourly pay I'll be generous, I'll do $150 because I can. So the next one, we'll make it ID2 and this one can be Peter and this one's gonna be intern guy and he doesn't make much money. Let's say he makes $10 and you don't have to watch me type the other three. Okay, so I entered the other three names. Um, with certain positions and hourly pace that are different because down the road we'll create uh, updates to this uh, application where we are going to be sorting the names and by hourly pay, 
determining the highest pay, the lowest pay, and so forth. So this is my table. It's saved. So now I can go to my form designer and uh, put in the grid view. So I'm going to add first the data source. So I'll go to view and other windows. And up here, which is off camera right now, but it says, uh, it's a second from the top, it says data sources. And I click that and my data sources are added to my, uh, to my toolbar down here. I'll move it up. So you can see now it says add new data source and I'm going to click that, add a database. I'll add a data set. It already is uh, pre-fill in the personal database, so I'll leave that. Maybe we can have a new connection string, so I'll just click next. And now we have uh, what we want to use for our database objects. And what I want to use is the tables, the employee table. And I'll click finish. So now I have my employee table with the data source. And if you click the arrow on the left, you can see that we have our columns, ID, name, position, and hourly pay. And if you click the drop down, you can add data grid or details or none. In our case, we're going to add the data grid to our uh, form. So uh, on the left of my employee right here is the icon for the data source. I'll click it and drag it to my personal database form. And you can see that it positioned everything on the form, but it's kind of, I have to stretch it out because there's more. There you go. So this is going to be my form and everything's already uh, created successfully. You can read it down here that it's uh, update successfully. And um, if I run it, it should populate the grid. So let's try it. And here is my form and here is all the information in the columns and you can flip through them and um, Yep, this is the exercise. Very simple, just connecting to the database and the grid view. So in the next part, we are going to manipulate the database uh, and the grid view a little more. So stick around for the part two. I'll see you then.